Hello people, welcome to our podcast, Italim Inglisi Bil Inglisi. Today's session is about social psychology. Social, something related to social stuff, and psychology, the science of the self. So, social psychology. Okay, let's start uh, our podcast with a famous quote. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Franklin Franklin Roosevelt said that. Said what? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. This quote reminds us that our feelings and what others think can shape our actions, often creating fear. So, when it comes to social psychology, we have some important words related to the social psychology topic. Let's start with the first one. Conformity. Conformity. It means changing your thoughts or actions to fit in with a group. Conformity. Example. In a school, a student might dress a certain way or listen to popular music just to fit in with friends, even if they don't really like those uh, things. You get it? Maybe you, you, you will listen to some kind of music because other people do that. Maybe you will uh, dress like uh, in, in a certain way because other people do that. This is called conformity. It's a, a famous social psychology principle. Two. Word number two, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dis dissonance. The uncomfortable feeling when your beliefs don't match your actions. Example. A person who cares about the environment but drives a gas uh, car, gas guzzling car, might feel guilty to ease this discomfort. They might justify their choice by saying uh, they need a big car for their family or something. This is called cognitive Dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. It's the uncomfortable uncom feeling when your, your beliefs don't match your actions. The next word is attribution. Attribution. It means figuring out why someone behaves a certain way either because of their character or the situation. It's called attribution. To attribute the behavior to the ca the character the character or the situation attribution example for if a, if a student fails a test a teacher might think it's because the student didn't study internal attribution or because the test was unfairly difficult okay number 4 group think group think when a group makes Bad decision because everyone wants to agree. Uh, for example, in, in a business meeting, if all team members agree on a risky project just to avoid conflict, even if some have doubt, it can lead to poor outcomes for the company. So you agree with something because the, the, the group you are in uh, agree with it. You get it? It's, it's called groupthink. Social facilitation, social fa facilitation, social facilitation. It means performing better on simple tasks when other people are watching. So when other people are watching you, you will perform better than on, on, on better uh, on simple uh, tasks. Example: An athlete might run faster in a race when there is a crowd cheering them on compared to when they are practicing alone. So if we have an athlete and this athlete uh, is in a race, he will run fast, faster than being alone, faster than being in a condition that uh, practicing alone. This is called social facilitation. So uh, by standard effect, by standard effect means when people are less likely to help someone in need when others are around. Example, in a crowded street, if someone trips and falls, for example, by standard, by standards, uh, may just watch instead of helping. Thinking, what, 
<laughs> bah. Thinking uh, someone else will step in. So this is called what? By standard effect. Okay, maybe you see some someone in trouble, is in trouble, and you won't uh, help him because uh, other pe you, you 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 just wait for another person to help him. So self-serving bias, self-serving bias. Blaming out it means blaming outside factors for bad outcomes while taking credit for good outcomes. Example. A student who gets a high grade on a test may say it's because they started hard, but if they get a low grade, they might blame the teacher for making the test too difficult. So this is called what self-serving bias. Uh, the outcomes is uh, uh, are with you, okay? Because I studied hard. The outcomes are against you. That's the that bad teacher who made the test too difficult. So it's called uh, self-serving bias. Okay, we have something else. Uh, okay, so we have uh, seven very important words here. Let's review. C conformity, conformity, cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance, attribution, groupthink, social facilitation, and bystander effect, self-serving bias okay let's move to the principles we have a lot of principles related to social psychology that let us understand the world around us and be in a better place because when we understand something we handle it better so i i came with four important principles of the social psychology let's start with the first one social influence such influence, uh, it means other people can greatly affect how we behave. We are affected always uh, by other people's behaviors. So peer pressure in adolescents, adolescents, okay, uh, skip it, um, often leads teenagers to engage in risky behaviors like smoking or skipping school because they want to fit in. So it's called social influence so we do like other people around us do that's the social influence the power of the situation principle number two the power of the situation the situation we are in can change how we act during for, for example during a football match fans often scream and cheer wildly uh, wildly for their team acting differently uh, than they would be in a quiet library, for example. So, being in a football game, you will act in a way totally different from being in a quiet library. Group dynamics. Principle number three, group dynamics. How people interact in a group can lead to a unique behaviors. So, during a group project, for example, some members may not contribute much relying on others to do the work, which can lead to frustration and imbalance. Number four, cognitive processes. Cognitive processes. How we think about ourselves and others shapes our actions. If someone believes that they are bad at math, they might avoid taking math classes, limiting their opportunities and... Uh, their uh, negative self-image. They will have something called negative self-image. Cognitive processes. So, famous experiment. I'll tell you something very interesting now related to the uh, social psychology. It's called, uh, it's a famous experiment called the Stanford Prison Experiment. In 1971, psychologist Philip his name was Philip, okay, ran an experiment uh, where college students acted as either God, gods or prisoners, prisoners in a fake prison. It's a very famous experiment. You can search for it on YouTube, for example, and watch the whole uh, experiment. So again, this scientist uh, brought uh, some college students and he gave them uh, rules. 
some of them were guards and the, some of them were prisoners in a fake prison, of course. The guards quickly became cruel while the prisoners showed signs of stress and helplessness. And they know it's just an experiment, but they live the rule. To, they live the rule completely. So uh, the guards became cruel and tough, and the prisoners uh, showed signs of stress and helplessness. The study was stopped after just six days. You know why? Because it became too extreme. Uh, some of the guards started to to hit to use uh, their sticks to hit the prisoners, hit them in their body. This showed how powerful roles and situations can influence behavior. So it's, it's, it's a very, very famous uh, experiment. You have to search for it and uh, try to be careful in your life because the role that you take and situation that you are in will affect your behaviors. Okay, story related to the topic here. We have a, a famous story, not a famous story, I'll make it famous, uh, related to the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, social psychology, our topic today. It's called uh, the bystander effect. Bystander effect. One day in a busy city, a young woman named Sarah collapsed on the sidewalk. So, what was the name of the woman? Sarah. What happened to Sarah? She collapsed on the sidewalk. Many people walked by noticing her, but not helping. Then a little boy saw her and called for help. His mother heard him and quickly came over to assist Sarah and call for an ambulance. That's it. I know it's silly, <laughs> but let's analyze what happens here. We have a young woman named Sarah walking in uh, on the sidewalk she collapsed she fell down many people walked by noticing her but not helping nobody helped her but a little boy saw her and he decided to call her mother uh, who, who came quickly to uh, help the uh, Sara to help Sara we here now we, we are in in front of uh, a very famous principle of social psychology. This principle calls uh, the bystander effect. The bystander effect. People won't help someone in trouble because they will expect other others will do. You get it? So this story shows the babies, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the bystander effect. When people see someone in trouble, they often wait for others to act. It remains us to take action and help when we can help and do something, not be affected, not, not stay affected by, by other people' uh, behaviors. You get it? So at the end, um, social psychology helps us understand how our behavior is linked to others. By learning about these ideas, we can be more aware of our actions and the situations we are in. Thank you for joining today's session. If you have